The first round of fixtures for the 23-24 UEFA Champions League has concluded. And I'm going to give you all the results and talk to you about what happened in each match, give you a quick review and recap of all the ongoings of the matches. I was live for Bayern Manchester United in Group A, so we'll start there. But before I continue, make sure to comment down below what you think of the opening week of fixtures for the 23-24 Champions League campaign. And as always, if you end up enjoying the video, consider giving it a like. Let's get into it with Group A. Copenhagen Galatasaray was today. It started 2-0. It was very kind of, uh, you know, shocking result perhaps you know Galatasaray at home good squad the likes of Icardi um Torreira's there they got uh Demarabai from Bayer Leverkusen he joined uh Musilera in that uh Zaha Ziyech you know the list goes on and on truly like some top quality players and Copenhagen relatively unknown you know in the Danish league uh they took a 2-0 lead they did kind of Fall apart towards the end. Uh, two quick goals in the 85th and 88th minute, I believe, ended up seeing them uh, draw this match, which put them on one point each with Galatasaray. But the main storyline here is the absolute anomaly of a fixture, which was Manchester United versus Bayern. This was at the Allianz Arena, so Bayern was at home. Bayern took a 2 0 lead, which was, you know, I watched this live on stream and it looked like it could have been more, you know, they were really, you know, every time they were going forward, Onana made a few very fatal errors, but eventually Rasmus Hoyland got his Champions League debut goal. Um, a penalty was awarded for Bayern. Harry Kane converted that. And then we saw Matthias Tell score an absolute rocket from close range, just smashed it into the top net. Uh, and there was, you know, kind of like late spur by United, where they scored two goals, uh, you know, a Casemiro header, well, not header, but he kind of went down the ground and he, you know, swiped in the ball, you know, into the bottom left corner. It was kind of like a funky goal. Uh, and there was also like a very like last moment of the game free kick by Bruno Fernandes that was on target and Casemiro just got his head on to the end of and ended up converting. So tough loss for United to start the, you know, the matches. But if we look here, the next game is against Galatasaray. So, you know, even though they're at home, it's going to be a hard fixture. Galatasaray has some quality players, as I mentioned before. Wilfred Zaha will probably play in that ma match, his first Champions League match ever, and he'll be facing it off against Manchester United at Old Trafford. Like, truly a dream come true for him, I would imagine. Then, you know, so it, this group can really go anyway. Obviously, if United don't get the win against Galatasaray next, questions will be asked. You would expect Bayern to get points against Copenhagen, probably all three. And then, you know, United has Copenhagen after that. So it's not necessarily the, you know, if they had Copenhagen next, you could expect United to get the win. But I don't know if they'll get the win against Galatasaray. Stay tuned for my preview on that uh, week of fixtures. But next is Group B. Arsenal is at top of the group after battering PSV 4-0. Uh, another Champions League debut goal for a player at Arsenal. Well, two, I believe. Um, maybe even three. I don't know if Odegaard's featured in the Champions League, uh, before, but Bukayo Saka got his Champions League debut goal. Leandro Trossard also got his Champions League debut goal. Gabriel Jesus scored. Bukayo Saka assisted a goal. Trossard assisted a goal. Odegaard scored and assisted as well. So three players assisting and scoring. Jesus scoring goal. Very comfortable, dominant display by Arsenal. I mean, just all in all, they did a fantastic job. Um, I didn't get to catch this game as I was live for the uh, Manchester United Bayern game, but I saw the highlights and some solid stuff from Arsenal. But Len Sevilla ended 1 1. Um, Ocampos took the lead for Sevilla in the ninth minute, and then we saw a goal from Fulgini for Lens in the 24th. This match just kind of stayed in the balance for the rest of the fixture. I had my eye on it as I was live for the Manchester United game uh against Bayern but you know it it was uh it was I would imagine kind of like a drag of a fixture because you know no goals for the last 70 minutes or so it's kind of rough but next is some interesting developments in group C uh Real Madrid they had a match against 
Union Berlin to start off today. Um, and in that match, Jude Bellingham scored a very late minute, like 94th minute, I believe, winner. It was honestly astounding. Jude Bellingham now, I think, has six goals and an assist and six fixtures for Real Madrid this season. So it's he, he's been great. As a Liverpool fan, I, I'm definitely a little envious, but I'm not like upset that Liverpool have gone the route they have, but Bellingham truly is a talent. And Real Madrid have probably the best midfielder of his generation for the next decade, I would assume. Uh, you know, he he's just scoring goals for them in 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 bunches. So credit to him there. Uh but besides that, there was Napoli versus uh Braga, which was as a game and as a match, an interesting one to kind of like cover i uh you know i was watching the manchester united game and right at the end as like fixtures were wrapping up i wanted to know you know how are the other matches going and in the 46th minute di lorenzo had taken the lead for napoli um from there on out you know i was checking intermittently in the second half and there wasn't necessarily any updates to that uh braga napoli game then the 84th minute i saw bruma scored and i was like oh my god they're going to draw with Napoli. Uh, but Napoli did end up getting the win thanks to a Nia Kate own goal in the 88th minute. So the la- the lead didn't last very long, but it was it was kind of like a sad realization. I thought maybe at the end they could squeeze out a point and you know somehow score a goal, but it didn't happen. Next on to group D. Group D has some some shocking fixtures here. Um we'll start with Salzburg Benfica. Salzburg traveled to Portugal. They face off against Benfica. And in the 15th minute, they were awarded a penalty thanks to, well, there was two penalties, actually. I didn't even realize. So in the second minute, Trubin, the goalie for Benfica, he gets a yellow card. Um, he swings towards the front post. The ball swings towards the front post. He went to punch it. He punched the player. Uh, Pavlovich specifically. Karim Konate can't convert in the third minute. But then the 13th minute, Antonio Silva gets a straight red and Roko Simic ends up bearing a penalty in the 15th minute. After that, obviously being a man down, Benfica had to try to retool and approach the match a little differently. But in the 51st minute, Oscar Gluck gets assisted by Roko Simic, who another Champions League debut scorer, another Champions League debut scorer and assister. I mean, that's who now? You got... uh. Hoyland scoring on his debut, Saka scoring on his debut, Trossard scoring on his debut, Roko Simic scoring on his debut. But also on top of that, you have, uh, you know, Roko Simic, Saka, and Leandro Trossard all assisting as well as scoring. So very interesting kind of some very, you know, engaging debuts, let's say. So credit to them. Tough loss for Benfica at home. This would have been one of the matches that they were like, we need to win this one. We have, we'll have, win this one and the other ones, you know, we'll, we'll pick up points where we can. But that's a tough loss for Benfica and we'll see how they bounce back from that. But thankfully for them, Real, Sociedad, and Inter drew 1-1. Uh, Sociedad took the lead in the fourth minute. Bryce Mendez scored for them after some pressure by him. And um, who was it? Him and Arirazza ball. Yeah, they were pressing... Uh, some of the defenders for Inter, specifically Bastoni, I believe. And then that ended up resulting in a Bryce Mendes shot that ended up being a goal. And and then the 87th minute, we saw Lautaro Martinez score a goal to win. Well, not win the game, but he drew 1-1 against uh, Real Sociedad. So, you know, I think he's the captain of Inter now. Let me confirm that real quick. I believe he is the captain. Yeah, Lautaro Martinez is the captain of Inter. So, Big, big goal for him. His first match captaining uh, the Milan side. But next, on to Group E. These are all the fixtures from Tuesday. Yeah, so these are the Tuesday fixtures. Starting with Feyenoord Celtic. This match was... This match was crazy. Calvin Stings, he scored uh, in stoppage time in the first half. A direct free kick uh, in the 47th minute. Then we ended up seeing Gustav Lagerbeil sorry if I butchered that Gustav, but he was sent off with his second yellow card in the 63rd minute. Uh, 
penalty was given, penalty was missed. And then in the 68th minute, Odin Thiago Holm gets sent off with a straight red for Celtic. Um, there was an offside for Giratrita. And then in the 76th minute, Jahan Baksh scored a winner. Well, not a winner. He doubled their lead and made it 2-0. But, you know, tough loss for Celtic. Um, I don't know how they're going to get out of this group. Two reds is really tough to bounce back from. Atletico Madrid and Lazio, what a match this was. Pablo Barrios scored in the 29th minute. And I got back, and it was probably like the 82nd or something. I was just kind of like getting home. I put on the game, and as I was watching it, right at the end, uh, Ivan Provdel, and if you might be wondering, who is that? That's the Lazio goalie, and why would I be mentioning him? Well, he scored equalizer in the 90, what minute is it? 95th minute equalizer, a header. It was a really good header, too. He just buried, you know, the header and immediately just, it was the last, like, literal last moment of the game. The match ended immediately after that, and it was, he just, he didn't know what to do. He was running. It was incredible. But this match, I think this this group could be a little more exciting than many people will expect. I mean, if Feyenoord can, you know, get some points off Atletico Madrid, this whole group changes in complexion. Next is Group F. PSG and Dortmund will be the first fixture we talk about. Uh, 2-0 win for PSG. Uh, Kylian Mbappe scored a penalty in the 49th minute, and Atraf Hakimi scored a very nice goal in the 58th minute. Um, you know, it... It was a tidy one-two for the Hakimi goal. Dortmund, they just they're they're clearly missing Drew Bellingham. He's left obviously for Real Madrid, but it feels as if they haven't properly replaced him. I mean, you look at that midfield three, no offense to any of these players. I like all these players on their own. Amre Chan, Julian Brandt, Sabitzer. Feels very conjoined, uh, you know, not conjoined, disjointed. It feels very disjointed. There's a lot of you know, they're playing a five at the back, a five, three, two. It's, it just wasn't pretty. Um, I watched the extended highlights of that fixture and was not impressed by Dortmund's performance. Uh, caught a little bit of the second half as well live. But uh, AC Milan, Newcastle, the Sandro Tonali derby, finished nil nil. No goals. Uh, Davide Calabria was subbed off with an injury. Ruben Loftus Cheek was subbed off with an injury. And Mike Magnan was also subbed off with an injury. There was a lot of yellows dished out after the Magnan yellow, or injury, I should say. Um, and honestly, not much more to be said. Uh, let's see the group details. Dortmund, Milan next, Newcastle versus Paris. So Kylian Mbappe will be at St. James Park in at, on October the 4th. So that's kind of crazy uh, to think about. But, you know... Dortmund, Milan, that's going to be a big, big match um, going to the Signal Igunda Park. Milan will need a win, I think, um, because if Dortmund gets a win, I think PSG will get a win. Um, I mean, if, yeah, if Dortmund goes up, it's just going to become a lot tougher because Milan's going to have to face PSG twice still, and it's a whole, whole kerfuffle. But next is Group G, Leipzig, Man City. Uh, Zvezda and Young Boys. We'll start with Young Boys versus Leipzig. Um, Simakon scored in the third minute, gave them the lead. Uh, after that, we saw a goal from Elia for Young Boys. And then following that, you know, I was kind of like keeping my eye on this, like intermittently checking the score. And I was like, wow, it's still 1 1. It's still 1 1. And then the 73rd minute, we saw uh, Zavar Schlager score an absolute like wonder goal from range. It was very, very good. Um, and then, you know, after that, we saw, uh, we saw a goal in the 92nd minute by Benjamin Sheshko. Sheshko became Leipzig's youngest ever Champions League scorer. Uh, so very good for them there. And then uh, Man City versus Tirvana Zvezda. This is a, this is a match that I also, you know, wasn't able to watch live, but man, I was checking up on my phone constantly for updates on this. At the end of the first half, Osman Bukhari took the lead through an assist 
from Mirko Ivanic. And then immediately after, in the start of the second half, Julian Alvarez scored. And then he scored a free kick in the 60th minute after that 47th minute equalizer. And then, you know, I was like, oh, maybe, you know, they could get like a random header in off a free kick. It's only 2-1. But the match did finish 3-1 thanks to a Rodri goal, which was honestly... It just looked like he passed into the bottom right corner. Like he just curled in a pass. Still think City's going to top this group, but, um, you know, I, I don't really know what else to say. I think City will eventually pip Leipzig to the top spot and it'll probably end in this order is my guess. But next is the final group, but not the last group, certainly. Group H, uh, the biggest win of match week one was Barcelona against Antwerp. Royal Antwerp were thrashed by. A bunch of goals from some Barcelona forwards and midfielders. A brace from uh, Joao Felix in the 11th minute and the 66 he scored. Uh, Robert Lewandowski in the 19th. Own goal in the 22nd uh, from the defender, the right back specifically, Gel Batel uh, at Royal Antwerp. And then Gavi scored in the 54th. I mean, just an absolute thrashing. In the highest form i know chelsea fans are probably really pissed out about pissed off about the you know general uh you know explosion let's say by joel felix he's just been really great for barcelona so far and yeah he seems like he's right at home and then the final match we're going to talk about is porto versus Shakhtar donetsk uh galeno scored in the eighth minute to take the lead one nil Five minutes after that, there was an equalizer from Kelsey at Shakhtar Donetsk. But then two minutes after that, Galeno got his second. And then Taremi scored in the 29th. Um, this fixture, if you look at the table, you would expect these sides to face off. I think this is a very, very big win for Porto in the context of the group. Um, because if I'm not mistaken, Porto has, Porto has Barca next. So they're probably not going to win that. They might not even draw it. They're probably going to lose. But this match could end up in a draw. And if that does, then, you know, Porto just has to be Antwerp and they'll be in a very good spot going into the second half of the group stages. But those are the results for match week one of the UEFA Champions League for the 23-24 season, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to comment down below what are your thoughts on all the matches on match week one. What are your predictions for the groups? And thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, why not consider subscribing? You know, you've already been here for however many odd minutes, but thank you so much for watching. Once again, like the video if you enjoyed and see you soon. Thanks again for watching. I'm Sideline Sato. Peace.